In this video, I'm going to show you how to leverage Migrate for Anthos to migrate a two-tier Linux-based application running on VMware into Google Kubernetes Engine. When complete, we will have the application and database components running in Kubernetes, including the database state that existed on-prem. Let's get into the demo. Let's jump into this demo. In this demo, we're going to migrate a two-tier application from VMware to our GKE cluster running in cloud. The first thing I want to do is level set a little bit on some Kubernetes concepts. The first thing is pods. Pods can be more than just a single container. They can share volumes and namespaces. And in many cases, we're going to deploy more than one container inside a pod. A good example of this is in Istio. We deploy sidecars to collect telemetry and metrics. And when you describe that pod, you'll see more than one container. An important concept that we're going to talk about is services. Services are going to be things we configure to expose our applications to each other and to the outside world. There's different types of services. You'll see us talk about cluster IP, load balancer service, node port, and etc. We'll generally create namespaces for different types of applications and different services running inside our cluster. You may have heard the term project used before also. It's the same concept of a namespace and often used in a Kubernetes environment. Stateful sets are generally used for more complex applications that require state and need to be deployed in a certain manner. Persistent volumes are how we store data inside our container environments. Think of it as a database state or any kind of state we need to manage. You have different options to reclaim or reattach these to containers when they are spun up and spun down. You'll also see us configure a persistent volume claim. That is how the pod will claim the storage that is assigned to it. If it has to move around or again gets redeployed, it will mount that same volume if that's the way it's configured. Next, let's show you some of the YAML configuration examples that we'll be using in this demo. The top left corner, you're going to see we're going to be deploying a service. It's going to be listing on port 80 and directing things back to our port 9376 in this example. This is a small YAML configuration of a persistent volume claim. You can see we're claiming 5 gigs of storage and we're having a read-write once configuration. This is a stateful set example. You can see it's a little bit more complicated. We've got some more configuration variables and aspects in this. At the very bottom, you can see the container image that we're calling it out to run. Have a look at phase 1 discovery and planning. In this example, we've got two virtual machines running in our VMware environment. They're based on CentOS 7. The application is a Python Flask application, and our database is MySQL. Users are leveraging corporate DNS and connecting over this URL. We've got a VPC configured into our GKE environment. We've configured VPC subnets in our GCP project, and our GKE cluster is also deployed in leveraging the same VPC. The next thing we have to do is create the landing zone. That's going to allow us to get things configured. We're going to deploy the cloud extension via Migrate for Compute Engine Manager. It's going to allow us to stream data from our virtual machines running in v VMware into our cloud extension. Let's have a look at what that deployment looks like. The way this is deployed is we go to the main page of our Migrate for Compute Engine Manager. We choose our target cloud, and we're able to create the cloud extension from this interface. We've already created the cloud extension for this demo. The name is default. Our cloud provider is GCP, and our status is active. That our application is up and running in this example. Here's the IP address that it's running on, and it's listing on port 5000. You can see the address is a 192 address, and that's running inside our VMware cluster. We'll show you later as we migrate this into cloud, it'll have a different IP address, and we would update DNS so the users could connect to the new environment. So next thing we have to do is push out the YAML config to expose our application. What we're going to do is we're going to create that service and we're going to have it listen on port 80 and it's going to forward all requests to the back end service that's running on port 5000. See in this case is we're going to expose a service type of load balancer so it's accessible outside of the cluster and our users will be able to connect to the application. Database service, we're going to keep the type as cluster IP because it only needs to communicate with the application server that's running in the same namespace. We don't have to expose the database outside of the Kubernetes cluster and outside of that namespace. Taking this approach adds an additional layer of security because we don't have to expose the database port to the outside world. The other piece of configuration we have the option to do is configure network policy. Network policy will allow us to secure the communication across microservices and different namespaces. You can get into more detail around networks policy in the Kubernetes documentation online. So let's have a quick look at the YAML configurations required 
to provision these services. So on the left side, you can see we're provisioning a service of type load balancer. We're having it listen on port 80 and forward request to port 5000. On the right hand side, this is our database configuration. You can see we're leveraging type cluster IP and the database is listening on 3306. All we have to do is apply these YAML configurations and these services will be configured inside our GKE cluster. So let's go ahead and apply these configurations. We'll go ahead and create the service. You can see it's going into a particular namespace. We can go ahead and have a look at the service and make sure it's created since we've run our YAML config. In this case, we're going to specify the namespace, PYMY. You can see we have two services configured. One of them is a load balance service. One of them is a cluster IP service for the database. And one of them pending. So pending is our external IP is going to be configured. We just need to give it a second and our external IP will come up. The next phase of the migration, we're going to go ahead and create two stateful sets from a YAML configuration. One of them will be for our application container and one of them will be for our database container. And this is going to allow us to start the migration process. What we're going to have to configure is some persistent volume claims. You can see here we defined a size. And this is going to allow us to start the stream process from the virtual machines running inside VMware into our GKE containers running in GCP. For example, we need to create a persistent volume claim. And that's going to allow us to start the process of streaming our virtual machine from our on-prem environment running on VMware into our GKE cluster running on GCP. You can see we've set some parameters inside this configuration file. You can see here we've specified the VM ID. That is the VM ID that will show inside your vSphere cluster. For example, we're also configuring fully cached. And what that'll do is it'll leverage the GKE storage inside the cluster. The other configuration option here we would have is streaming, and that would do a stream from the source VM into our environment. As far as advantages go, fully cached will be a faster process than doing it over a stream mode. So we'll stick with fully cached for this example. Configure the run mode to test clone in this case. What that's going to do is VMware will take a snapshot of the VM, and then we'll be able to stream that virtual machine into GKE. The other option will be shutting down the virtual machine and moving it. This way allows us to continue to use the virtual machine on-prem while we move things into the cloud. This is what our stateful set configuration is going to look like. In this case, we're going to use streaming disk. That will allow the pods to stream the PV disk information. And here you can see we provided the PVC name uh, in the configuration. And this is the one that we configured in the earlier step so it knows where to mount. So when we apply these configuration, Migrate for Anthos is going to take a clone and a snapshot of the virtual machine running on-prem and start the process of spinning up a container in GKE and start to migrate the data into the cloud. The stream process will start to stream the data into cloud. And then at that point, when that's finished, we'll be able to access the application via the external IP that we configured earlier and validate the application is online. Go ahead and we'll apply the configuration that we just walked you through in this case, we're going to use a kubectl apply command, and we've got the YAML already pre-configured. You can see we've created our persistent volumes and our stateful sets. Now we'll go ahead and check for the pods and specify the namespace. And you can see now our pods are in the initialization stage. The stream process has started, and we'll do the watch command to start to watch the status of these virtual machines. The data streaming has started and moving data from the VMware environment into cloud. And this will take about four to five minutes to finish. You can see here we've got our external IP. We can see our pods are ready. They're up online. They've been up for nine minutes. Let's go ahead and validate our external IP address. You can see it's right there. We'll copy that. We'll go into our browser and let's see if we can hit the application. So you can see our application is now online and we can access it. We're able to log in. We'll use the test account to log into it. So you can see here the database has been migrated as well because our users configured. Now we'll move on to the next stage. Our migration is completed and we validate the application. We need to go ahead and move our persistent volumes over to persistent disk using the migrate for Anthos storage exporter. What we're going to do is we're going to migrate the YAML config that has the existing disks in there and we'll apply it with a new configuration and that will move to our persistent volume that we're going to keep around for the application. So the next step here, we have to create some new PVCs, so some persistent volume claims. We need to create a config map, 
And you can see here, we're going to go ahead and configure that. We've got five gigs of storage for our persistent volume claim. And we've also got our config map over here on the right side. One thing we want to make sure when we're defining our storage volume size is future growth considerations. So make sure you size that appropriately for uh, database growth if we're considering the database environment. Dive into our config map configuration a little bit. You'll see here down at the bottom, we're able to specify which uh, folders, structures that can be omitted during the migration. So we don't have to keep that data around. Obviously, this was more important to a virtual machine than a container. So the next part we have to do is we have to define a job for the storage exporter. And we'll be populating these values here. We're going to use export, streaming disks. We're obviously uh, referencing our PVC volume our target of our new PVC, and the configuration. Apply these configurations and move on to the next stage. Before that, we want to go ahead and delete the stateful sets first. So we can go ahead and have a look at what stateful sets exist in our namespace. You can see we've got two of them here. Now we need to go ahead and delete these because they're still tied to our stateful sets. And we want to free these up so that we can migrate to our final persistent disk for these applications. Go ahead and delete the first stateful set for the application. And then we can delete the stateful test that's attached to the database. Now they're both deleted. Now we can go ahead and apply the configuration. You can see this is very much like Kubernetes. We're just applying YAML configurations. Go ahead and apply. You can see we've created the storage class, persistent volume claims, the config map, and we've got the job exporters running for both of them. You can see the two new exporter pods have been created. Two jobs are also created. Once these finish and we can monitor these jobs, we'll know that our storage has been exported and moved over to our final persistent volumes. We can monitor the pods and make sure they come ready with a simple watch command. And you can see they're now ready. They've been online for 50 seconds. We're just waiting for the operations to complete. You'll see these jobs will become completed in a few minutes. Now the jobs have ready and completed, and the storage is migrated to the new persistent disks. Now what we're going to do is go ahead and recreate the stateful sets and complete the migration. So this is the last stage of our migration. Once this is complete, we've migrated our applications and our containers up and running with our application front end and our back end database. So in this case, this will be the modification that we're going to do to our stateful set configuration. You can see we're going to set this to exported, which means that it's been finished. And you can see here we've got our new PVC claim for the application in this example. Apply this configuration to finish up the migration of this uh, two tier application. We'll go ahead and apply the YAML file. You can see we've created the new stateful set uh, for both the application and the database. We'll go ahead and have a look at our pods. You can see they're uh, spinning up the database container in that sense, and now both of them are running. You can see our, our exporter jobs are done, and our two pods are online, our front end and our back end. Let's go ahead and have a look at our external IP and make a note of that. Now we can go ahead and refresh the application. And you can see our application is online and, and the data that was stored in the database is intact and accessible. Now we can go ahead and delete the original persistent volume claims that we're using. Um, so we've shown you in this demo that we can do a two-tier migration from VMware on-prem environment into uh, GKE and bring the application up in a pretty short period of time and also maintain all the state that was in the database previously. I hope this video was helpful in understanding the powerful capabilities that Migrate for Anthos delivers. Being able to migrate VM-based workloads into Kubernetes and maintain state is a real game changer. Keep an eye out for more demos and capabilities that will be delivered in new versions.